So unfortunately, I destroyed one of my EcoFlow Delta Pros. It mostly works. The MPPT works and the inverter output works, so that's nice. But the AC charging circuit is completely destroyed. Um, it will not accept a charge from an AC outlet. And me and my friends were hanging out last night and testing the systems and we think we figured out what happened. So this 240 volt hub that connects the two EcoFlow Delta Pros, I created a neutral ground bond against the advice of EcoFlow because I wanted to charge up my Tesla. I was pretty angry because EcoFlow said that I should not do it, but everybody online was doing the neutral ground bond and I was like, what the heck, let me try it anyways. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, in these units, the ground neutral bond is not as easy as people think. And I actually ran into a problem that I wanna share with you guys now. So first off, I disconnected the AC charger. Let's check for continuity between the neutral and the ground. So in both outlets, there is no continuity. Now we're gonna plug in the AC charger input to the grid. Now we're gonna check for continuity. And look at that, we have continuity. And this is not good. So with this configuration from the AC input to the AC output, it's using a bi-directional inverter circuit. So the AC charger is running the inverter circuit in reverse. But that means that the ground goes right through the unit. Now when I tested it, I connected both of these units to the grid with their own 20 amp supply to a sub-panel. And that sub-panel does not have a bond. You have the neutrals and the ground separated all the way out to the main panel on the other side of my property. And when I was frustrated, and I couldn't get this 240 volt receptacle to charge my Tesla, I created a second bond right here, which is not smart to do. Just think about the ground loop that we created throughout my whole property and where current could flow through this circuit. There was a potential difference between the neutral and the ground. And so we're thinking that when I made that bond, there was current flowing through this circuit right here and it destroyed the AC input. Um, part. I'd have to take it apart to really look. I'm not really sure, but um, that's what I'm thinking happened. I mean, that is a big no-no. Like you do not want to set up any system like that ever. <laughs> And I figured this out because when I had the 240 volt hub on, I couldn't charge these units. So I was thinking, oh, it must be using a bi-directional inverter circuit. It can either charge or it can discharge and that's it. And then I realized that when I connected solar, that's a separate circuit. So that is completely different than the AC charger in this system. So both of these units still have the MPPT that can work. And for some reason, the inverter circuit on both can output 240 volts but the AC charger on this one is completely broken. Also, when I did that neutral ground bond on the 240 volt receptacle, it did work, but I did smell something burning. So that was it. So my friend Dexter from Current Connected thought about it, and he said that this could be problematic from a safety standpoint. Let's say you have one unit connected to the grid, and you have that ground neutral bond at your panel, and that carries through to the AC output. And then let's say that you have the 240 volt hub and you are not using the AC charger, but the ground is still connected. Now let's say you attach a 240 volt device to this plug and then you have a ground fault condition. And this is entirely possible because the bi-directional inverter circuit, you can either have it charging or discharging and that's it. But I could easily see somebody doing what I did and leaving it plugged in. And then let's say you connect a 240 volt load to this receptacle and then you have a ground fault, you could technically create 120 volts on the case of your load to earth ground because the earth is still connected, you see? So in that instance, even if I do not do what I did that destroyed it with the ground neutral bond, we still think that you could actually create a somewhat unsafe system in some circumstances. But I'm going to ask EcoFlow what they think after I post this video. But what I did learn from this is do not do the ground neutral bonding on your own. A lot of people online, like most multiple YouTubers recommend doing that with those little plugs. And I did it myself on this hub and you should not do that. You're gonna create two bonds in your system if you ever plug in with an AC charger. You can technically do that bond if you're running these completely off grid. But the moment you connect the AC input, you're gonna have some problems. You could run this 240 volt receptacle safely with two units with a floating ground if you charge from solar only. And that's actually what I'm gonna do with these two units. I'm gonna wire them up to their own solar panel array and see how well it works. Now, something I think the EcoFlow should say is that it cannot charge a Tesla from the 240 volt receptacle. In a lot of the marketing material, it says you can charge an EV, you can charge an EV. 
but you cannot charge an EV with this outlet. They said to me specifically that the international version can, but this one cannot. And I think they should make that very clear for people. Now, if you run these units completely off grid with their own solar panel array, all of these problems pretty much disappear. Now, even though it's tricky, I still think it's a good unit. I'm actually loving the output um, and the capacity and the chemistry and how easy it is to roll these things around. So I still think these are a great unit, but you really need to understand what you're doing the moment you connect it to the AC grid. So that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know if you think that I missed something or if you can explain something better because that was a lot to take in, especially if you're a beginner. Like these are designed for beginners. So if you watch me talking about all this crazy stuff, you're like, what did he just say? Um, I know the electrical engineers will get it and they'll have something to contribute as well. But if you're a beginner, um, I would just say avoid using the AC input unless you're using it as a backup. Up. So if nothing else is connected, you can use the AC charging. Um, for long-term use, stick to solar charging and you won't have any issues. That's a completely isolated charging circuit. So just use that instead. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video and I would love to hear what you have to say. All right, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.